market also is highly, highly competitive. Um, and I think what we're trying to do is to find a place that we can add value without trying to um, go head to head and end up making it a price conversation only. So the fact that we're not trying to be all things to all people, being very specific about the verticals we go after and the type of customer that we go after um, is what's allowing us to do that. So if you were to come to me and say, Nathan, I've got 10,000 sites around the world, that's not us. We don't do that. If you come to me and say, I've got 100, 100 locations around the world and I want to be able to manage it uh, myself with the, the tools that you're providing to me, that's our niche. Uh, and that's where adding a lot more value. So um, it's definitely competitive, and, and we're hoping that with the things that we're doing, we're going to have that uh, sort of uh, corner of the, of the market that we're going to be able to go and uh, play around. It's more competitive, competitive. Okay. And, and I think uh, that's because it's, it is in some ways um, easier to operate. Easy to operate. Easier to operate here than, than in, in other markets. Okay. Um, but I also think that's also a degree of uh, the journey, right? So if you look at the markets in Asia Pac, they're all going on that same path. And I think it's, an, it's, a, it's a nature of the fact that India started that journey earlier than others. That's created a very uh, dynamic and competitive marketplace here. It's interesting, we were talking about it earlier that um, the growth in India has gone from services into India, that's now shifting to services to out of India, right? And I think the growth in the next year that we're seeing is um, uh, that, um, uh, what I call it, adjacent services. And what I mean by that is no one's going to do rip and replace at the current time, right? The, the, no one has the um, predictability or foresight that we used to have of, okay, we expect the market to do exactly this. We just don't know. So we, we sort of look at the market for the next year as being, give me a way to bolt on to what I currently have, and then if I get more confident, I can decide what I'm going to do on a bigger, broader basis. And that worked perfectly fine for us. We, we completely appreciate that no one's going to do a, a full rip and replace, and our success probably has been very much focused on project-by-project project basis work that we've been doing with, with customers, either that's um, providing DR capabilities or providing... Um, uh, greater resiliency uh, to customers. So in the next year, it's very much focused on how do you bolt onto what they have, rather than I would say big transformational projects. Well, I guess it's going to be a lot of those um, global players that we hear from today in Europe and US. Mm -hmm. But I think obviously in in India, you've got the likes of uh, Tata, Reliance, Bharti. Um, and it's, it's, it's an exciting place, right? Because it's all about co-opetition. In some opportunities, we cooperate because it's, it's very much in the nature of what our customers are looking us to do. And in other areas, we compete. Um, and that, that's equally uh, very natural. And again, I think that's very representative of um, the accelerated maturity you have in the market here now. Uh, it used to be an environment of, you know, winner takes all. But I think we've all sort of realized the point that that doesn't work anymore because we've all got a different value that we're adding into the solution for the customer. So... Um, our competitors are definitely those other big global players, but I think there's a, uh, there's a healthy competition coming out of India now as well as they provide broader services. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we have also seen that Reliance and Bharti has come together for mm. cable network from in the ceiling from Chennai to Singapore. Yep. Mm. Yeah, so they have come together. And, and it's interesting because they will still compete, compete yeah. Yeah. right? But at the same time, there will be a meeting going on next door. It's like, okay, how do we do this together? How do we improve on this yeah. relationship? Yeah. try to give our partners access to these services. Um, we recognize, again, that markets are growing quite rapidly and therefore we're not going to try and conquer all. Um, so one is, is being able to white label some of our services. The other uh, uh, piece that we hope we're adding value is in terms of the methodology and, and the tools that we're using. So because we've already been operating in Asia for more than 30 years, there's a lot of experience that we've garnered in terms of what systems, what tools are working for us. Um, so as, as an example, here in uh, India, when we are working with our domestic partners, we actually build now shadow networks. And what I mean by that is, in, normally when you have a network partner, you stop where you, where you interconnect, and everything behind that becomes a bit of a, a black hole because you're relying on the partner. What we've been able to agree is that we'll actually build these shadow networks, which means we can see core points 
on our partners' network. And it's not to be able to uh, keep them on us because there's a good deal of trust there. Right. But our folks with our customers is we want to be able to respond as fast as possible. And that means we need to be able to pick up a fault before our customer even knows about it. Right? The worst thing you can have is a customer going, oh, I can't send emails to that location anymore or I can't make voice calls to that location anymore. If we're able to change that and sort of in through that portal again say, hey, there's been a fault, whether it's our network or our partner's network, that's a huge value. And I think with our partners, we're, we're going through that journey together to say, you no longer have to build that everywhere yourself. You can start to do some of this sharing of networking and capability to be successful as well. So I think our, our value is there is from the white label and it's in terms of sharing the knowledge in terms of best practices that we've been looking at. Learning experience. If you, if you think back to when cloud started up, there was this whole view that everything's going to move in the cloud. Everything. It'll be, it'll be all in the cloud. And eventually, eventually maybe it will. But it's very much a progression and a journey that actually needs to happen. So uh, one of the questions we sort of get is, um, great if you put it in the cloud, but how am I going to get to the cloud? How am I accessing the cloud? So there's actually a, um, a bank that we're working with on a requirement in Asia Pacific. And one of the things they said to us is, we want end-to-end -end responsibility. And we see the same thing here in India. Okay. They don't want someone to say, oh, I'm delivering you this bit, someone else is delivering this, and someone else is delivering the end. I want end-to-end -end accountability. That's number one. Number two, I want to be able to decide my own transition to the cloud. I don't want you to say to me, it's a, a all or nothing kind of approach, which we know in the outsourcing space, that's quite common where they say, I'll do a transformation project for you. It'll be huge. It'll be great. We see that the, the, the technology understanding coming from India is saying, you know what, I'm going to decide when I need to go to cloud and what I need to go to. And the third part is recognizing that not one shoe fits all. And what I mean by that is um, we, we have to look at cloud on an application by application basis. So if you're talking about um, a supply chain, you probably want more of a utility cloud because you want to be able to have elasticity based on what you're supplying and what you're, you're buying. If we talk about our CRM or our uh, customer billing, we probably want that more in a private cloud to give us more security. If we've got legacy systems, we probably want that on a customized cloud, something that will give us a degree of flexibility, but that I can um, leverage the tools that I already have. But all of this in a common, in a common framework. Okay. So that's what, that's what we're seeing. So I think the maturity level has accelerated rapidly in terms of uh, assuming that cloud is going to solve everybody's problems mm -hmm. to cloud, like the network, needs to become another enabler to my business. And I need to decide what role it's going to play and where I want to use it, yes or no. Um, but it's, um, it's quite interesting if you look at the types of cloud offerings that are out there today, uh, it's how you actually integrate those together that they work with my business process. Because if you look at a, um, uh, what's a good example? You look at a BPO. BPO has the context in the software, they have the CRM, they have the billing systems, they have the operation systems. Right. Those could all be on different types of cloud environments, mm -hmm. right? depending on what level of access, what level of security. So how do they talk to each other and how do you provide that consistent user experience? So I think that's the real demand that, that, that these guys uh, here in India are pushing on the business when they're not doing their own thing. right? So I think that's been another learning is that um, the, the knowledge or the insights of the Indian market saying, you know what, we can probably do our own capability as well. But I think where the challenge will come is when you move offshore to be able to replicate that, yeah. are you really going to do a customized platform in every country? Probably not because your access to the resource pool that you probably have here is going to be more limited. Hence, if you can get that consistent experience from the, the network transmission from India to Asia or to Europe or India to the US, to getting access to the platforms that are equally consistent, but you still managing and controlling that, that's giving you that same outcome. But that's just the journey that we're going on in terms of cloud anyway. A very committed and focused approach to making sure that we've got it right. right. So, um, and again, I don't want to keep talking about other countries, but our learning has been it's better for us to make sure that we've ticked all the boxes, that we've got the right approvals rather than trying to uh, cut corners potentially to be able to go and say to not just uh, our own customers offshore, but here to say, this is the methodology I take here and this is the way I therefore do it everywhere else. Because if uh, you're familiar with your regulatory environment here in India right. and you're aware of the, the efforts and the, the detail I've gone to to make sure I get it correct, 
and you understand that's the way I replicate that everywhere else, you're going to have more confidence in how I'm supporting you in your business. So um, has, it, has, it taken a, has it taken a while? Absolutely. But it's also in terms of last year we got IPVPN up and running. We got that approved by the regulated and government authorities. Now we've done bandwidth and next we're doing the internet. So we're very progressive in terms of what we're going through. We could have done it all in one big bang. And then I'm sure we would have found that we've missed the piece here or there's an element there that we should have considered or there's a configuration there that we should have uh, focused on. So because India for us represents a core part of our network and our business moving forward, we've got to get it right. So if you recall, I mentioned that um, the India network is now a core link of that Europe to Asia path, as well as delivering services into and out of India. This isn't a short-term play here. We expect this to be there in the, in the long-term, this multi-service uh, platform that we're providing. So therefore, we've 